everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the iRobot Roomba J9 Plus. I did receive the sample directly from my robot, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. So how does the J9 Plus stack up against the competition? Well, we'll be comparing it not only within iRobot's lineup, but also with the overall averages of over 50 vacuums that we've personally tested. So first up, we like to look at max suction power. This is measured in PAs. Unfortunately, this information is not published or available, which leads me to believe it's not something they're proud of per se, because it's gonna be below the average. The average PAs we see is about 4,000. So why do I say that? Well, because you'll see when we measure max CFM, this is one of those uh, variables that kind of goes hand in hand with your PA score. When we measure this, we're below average pretty substantially. So I'm guessing it's not published for that reason, but really I'm just speculating at this point. The J9 Plus got one of the best scores. The only other score that was higher was the Combo J9 Plus. We got a score of 3.9. The brand average is 3.7, but you'll see the overall average is still a solid uh, two to three points above what we're seeing with the Roombas. But the good news is guys, they more than make up for it in the real world, which is the most important thing in my opinion. I don't care what the stats say, how does it actually perform day to day? So we've tested all of them in bedding, coffee grounds and the carpet to see what they're able to vacuum out. And we got a perfect score with the J9 Plus. 100 out of 100 did a fantastic job in our deep clean. The brand average overall is 89, so well above average by about 11 points. And you'll see we're about 14 points above the typical Robovac out there. So deep cleaning is going to be key with this vacuum. Next, let's talk about decibels. We got a max decibel readout vacuuming on carpet of 70. The brand average is 68. The overall average is 69. The good news here is there's no noticeable difference between your average Robovac and this Robovac, it's not any louder and it's not any quieter. Next, let's talk about battery life measured in minutes. We don't know the battery life for this vacuum. iRobot has not published the information. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably around that 90 minute mark, give or take. Usually that's what we see for the J series if we can ever find them advertised. Sometimes we see it advertised as high as like 140 minutes or so. I would just expect this to last for at least a solid hour plus but it might have to go back home and recharge depending on your clean settings, your preferences, and what it's trying to accomplish. For me in my house, over 500 square feet of floor, cleaned it without having to go back home and recharge. So maybe you can use that as a metric for you, but I'd expect it to be less than the average of 150 minutes, but maybe you'll be pleasantly surprised with your home environment. But the good news is it can recharge and resume. So for some reason it doesn't finish its cleaning job, it will remember where it stopped to charge and then after it's finished charging, it'll go back and finish cleaning up. So for me, when mine run at night, doesn't matter if it has to have, you know, six hours to clean it so it can clean for an hour, charge for an hour and then clean for another hour. I don't care because it'll be clean by the time I'm up. Next battery capacity. Again, this is unknown from the averages we have been able to find within their product lineup, about 2,200 milliamp hours below the average of 3,600. For this particular vacuum, I'd be pleasantly surprised to see if it was 2,200 or so. I like to think it's gonna be a little bit more because this vacuum has done a great job cleaning with that higher CFM value. Next, let's talk about height. There's no LiDAR navigation on this. It just navigates from a camera on the front bumper. This has a height of 3.4 inches below the brand average of 3.5. The I-Series has a little sensor up top that usually bumps it up that 0.1 inch. The overall average is 3.6 because that includes vacuums that skew it higher that have LiDAR navigation modules up at the top of their vacuums. Next, bin capacity measured in milliliters. This has a 400 milliliter bin capacity. The brand average is 380 milliliters. Overall average is 420, so we're well within range. Typically, you find smaller bin capacities on vacuums that self-empty because yes, they self-empty. So you find larger bin capacities on vacuums that don't self-empty to allow you to make less trips to the trash can to empty. And last, but definitely not least, let's talk about the cost of this vacuum. So compared to the brand average, we're a couple hundred bucks more than your typical Roomba, but this gives you some of the best cleaning abilities available today from iRobot and allowing you to have the camera to sense objects, pet waste, 
and you still pick up a self empty base. So it is gonna be more than your average a Robovac out there that also would offer self empty. I would say they also offer mopping modules and pads in some capacity and some will and won't have just as advanced navigation. So the trade off here is you got iRobot's cleaning system and ecosystem and one of the best cleaning systems with that Aeroforce dual brush roller system and a really cool design. I love the design of this one and its color versus the average vacuum out there. So just something you have to weigh on your own with your budget and what works best for you.